Hello, my name is Georg Melikiam, I am policy analyst and this is my show called Paradigm. Welcome to my show. This afternoon my guest is Nick Spanas. Hi Nick, how are you doing? Good, good, how are you? I am really excited to have you on my show. Nick Spanas is the founder and the chief executive officer of Blockchain Technology Corporation since 2014. He is also the founder and the CEO of Blockchain Apparatus. He is also the founder of Bitcoin Center New York City and co-founder of Zap Projects. So welcome to Armenia. I know that, yeah, this is the first time that you are in yeah, this country. Yeah. And uh, I hope that you are already enjoying good stuff in Armenia, good food, good people and whatever. So what are your first impressions from this yeah, country? Yeah, of course. I, uh, the food's great, of course. <laughs> and uh, the people are wonderful. Reminds me of uh, my people in Greece. Yeah. And uh, I feel like I'm at home. You're at home, really? Yeah. Good, so welcome home. And uh, I hope that it's not your, um, not your first but not the last visit to Armenia. And I know that we will talk about uh, all kinds of technology, Bitcoin technology and blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies. But let's start from the purpose of your visit. I know that uh, it was planned in close cooperation with the Armenian embassy to Denmark and led by our ambassador Alexander Zomanian. So it's great that uh, we are doing a great job bringing this kind of people to Armenia. So what is the purpose of your visit to Armenia? Well, that's a good question. Um, I'm, a, I'm a Bitcoin uh, evangelist, uh, I've been called, you know, and I uh, uh, try to explain what I've learned, you know, the hard way uh, over in the United States uh, and in the space so, so long from, uh, I don't know how many years, now, eight years maybe. Uh, and I believe that, um, I believe that uh, over here, uh, I came here, I, I've come, I've uh, been to a, a few countries uh, lately. I just believe that uh, places like Armenia, uh, we went to uh, Belarus and some other countries, but places that don't have such a high stake in the legacy financial system where they're not making all the money of the world like uh, Great Britain, Britain and, and others um, mm -hmm. have less of a uh, uh, barrier yeah. to be able to initiate more financial change through cryptocurrency and things of that nature. Yeah. So you, f you think that Armenia is well positioned to go into mining or into or buying or doing whatever with cryptocurrencies? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, you have many smart uh, uh, young people and uh, locked up, you know, in the minds of uh, the young people it is the future yeah. of this country. And uh, uh, the more I'm here, the more I feel attached to the Armenian people somehow, I don't know why. <laughs> but uh, uh, you're good people and uh, Bitcoin and blockchain is uh, uh, about transparency. Uh, before, you know, before Bitcoin and blockchain, the trust network was, uh, if, the, if a bank was a big and had big pillars, you trusted it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, now Bitcoin and the blockchain, Bitcoin's blockchain and other blockchains uh, are uh, a trust, uh, electronic trust network that's peer to peer, one person to the other. Um, and the people don't even have to know each other. Uh, and yet the trust is handled by the algorithms. So you're trying to explain the what blockchain is. And a little why bit should slowly. trust in that and how it works. So let's talk about that. Why blockchain is... Uh, First of all, is a reality because there is a tendency to move from conventional systems of banking or finances, or or people want to be more anarchic, like less dependent on government or governmental systems. What is the purpose, or is it just the technology invention, uh, advancement in technology, like uh, you know issues? Yeah, well, anarchy is a Greek word that means without a boss. So it's not that bad of a word. It means uh, self-sufficient uh, mm -hmm. and uh, without a, a, a boss. Uh, but um, it's more than that, you know. It's more than uh, uh, freedom from financial uh, networks and things. It's, uh, 
uh, Bitcoin is a reward system uh, to hold up the first database, public database for the world mm -hmm. uh, that cannot be changed. It, we've uh, embraced the digital scarcity uh, you know, in the past, you know, internet and computers you can make and copy a billion times and uh, they didn't care. But uh, the blockchain, Bitcoin blockchain and other blockchains uh, uh, create digital scarcity. And uh, through, that, through that digital scarcity, many things are also created. Uh, if the internet were a country mm -hmm. with no passport needed, uh, the money would Bitcoin, be Bitcoin. The money, the currency would be Bitcoin. Oh, okay, so great. Bitcoin is the internet's currency. I remember that um, during some interviews or many of interviews, people are trying to either defend Bitcoin or to deny the existence of the importance of the Bitcoin or the technology, and also arguing that it's not a real currency. You cannot buy anything with that. So I, I remember that you were answering to that. So what is your, re your reply to these both camps, those who accept and those who probably are more skeptical? Well, the early on skeptics should have bought it because the ones that bought it early on are buying all types of things with it right now. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, the value of it went up so much. But I'm not here to talk about uh, uh, investments and stuff like that. I don't really know how to invest. I'm a technologist, and uh, I believe uh, wholeheartedly in the technology. I believe that in addition to uh, the beauty of the first trust network of the planet, it allows us to re to re-examine trust and re-examine authority and to re-examine what money is because before... The concept know, of money, you mean? Yeah, the concept of uh, paper money because now we think money uh, are these pieces of paper with dead people printed on them. Nick, what is the difference between uh, cryptocurrency and banking cards which basically allow people to pay, but it's not a real paper-based money. Well, yeah, when um, uh, before the 1900s, all paper was redeemable. Most All paper was redeemable for gold. There were receipts for gold, and the gold was kept in vaults. Uh, but after the Federal Reserve Act in 1913, it wasn't pegged to gold anymore. And uh, as time went by, and as a matter of fact, in 1931, I think, uh, uh, J uh, uh, FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, made it illegal to own gold. Mm. And he even made it illegal to grow certain crops. So he made it illegal to own gold. You had these pieces of paper, and the world began believing that the pieces of paper had value. And uh, we still have a uh, belief that these pieces of paper have value. So we have uh, digital uh, representations of the pieces of paper. And then uh, these are ledgers that different banks have. And then uh, you get a credit card from one of those banks, and one of those uh, in that credit card would be a digital representation of a paper representation of what we thought uh, of our belief that the pieces of paper are worth something, uh, because for uh, many hundreds of years in the past, before the Federal Reserve Act, it was a receipt for gold. Mm. Benjamin Franklin. Uh, had a printing business and he printed only currencies. <clears throat> so his, he had currencies, every bank had a currency because it was a receipt, it wasn't really a currency, it was a receipt, redeemable in gold. Even the uh, department stores had their own currency and Benjamin Franklin was printing them. So uh, it used to be redeemability, where you get something <clears throat> for it, a receipt for it, and uh, then it became the pretty lithograms what do you call it? Collectors of lithograms. So if you have a lot of money, you're a collector of lithograms. I think what is the, uh, why people think that, and even especially say that uh, it's sort of bubble, like dot com, and they say that it will burst very soon or sooner, who knows. So 
Why? Why people don't trust this? Because they think that it's not visible, it's not, you can't, don't, can't touch that, so that's why. Or there are people who are behind financial and banking system who don't want this to become important and to have the, this competition with Bitcoin and currencies, cryptocurrencies in general. The bubble question, well, you know, uh, in the past, uh, or even now, you know, you have these stock and you buy a stock and it starts going up and what happens? Uh, the company prints more stock. See, in Bitcoin, we can't do that. We only have 21 million Bitcoin in the whole world ever to be released. From the blockchain, it's going to be only 21 million Bitcoin for the whole world. And that will stop. And that's it. In the year, by the year 2140, 21 million Bitcoin will be released from the blockchain. Right now, there's only 17 a million something that have been released so far. Um, that number is a little, uh, uh, it's fixed, right? So there's scarcity, just like gold and silver. Mm -hmm. So this would be a type of digital type or uh, digital type of gold because there's scarcity. And uh, we believe that scarcity is, uh, is uh, valuable. And people believed that for many millennium until the Federal Reserve Act of uh, 1913, where they just slowly boiled the frogs mm -hmm. to believing that, you know, pictures of uh, dead people <laughs> is uh, money. So why banks and governments are scared of Bitcoin? And why also some governments say that it's a threat to global banking system? Of course it's a threat to go global the banking because they're not scarce. Your grandmother, if she put away money for you and gave it to you now and she made that money when she, in her 20s or 30s and she gave it to you in her 70s, that money is going to buy one hundredth of what it used to buy. And that's because they print more money. Yeah, paper money is a bubble. You mean the inflation? Inflation. It's a tax. It's an invisible tax. Uh, the printing of money gives you the ability to buy less with the same amount of money. Uh, you need more money to buy the same thing because supply and demand, there's more money floating around, so you're going to have to trade it. It's, it's a human nature. It's not a, you know, it, it's pretty much the rules <laughs> that occur over time. And uh, the first person with the extra money that was printed has more buying power, but by the time the money gets spread around through the society, uh, then everything gets more expensive because more money, it takes more money to get it. Because it makes people uh, less happy, they become desensitized to the amount of money they got for their product and they want a little more because there's so much more floating around. So with Bitcoin, we can't do that. Mm -hmm. We only have 21 million and uh, the system is, uh, it's incredible. You read the, the uh, white paper from Satoshi Nakamoto. If you read the Bitcoin white paper a few times, uh, you'll understand even more. Um, you had some other things I forgot. Mm -hmm. We're not the bubble. Bitcoin is not in the bubble. B Bitcoin is the pin that's going to pop the legacy financial systems bubble. But in a stock markets, it goes up and down. It was 18,000, now it's 11 something thousand. So they say, look, it's a bubble and it will burst. It's, it's for sure. Yeah, they've been saying that when it was 7 cents and it went to 24 cents. And then they said it when it went to a dollar mm -hmm. and it came back down and then it went to $7. And then it came back down and then it went up to uh, $30 and it went back down to $10. It went back up and down, up and down. Went to $100, went back down to $30, it went up to uh, $300, oh, then it went to $130, and then from $130 it went to $1170, uh, $1,148. And then uh, it went down to $158. Mm -hmm. We had a bunch of, 2014 was a bad year. And uh, right now it's, uh, yeah, it went up to $19,000, or it hit $20,000, I forgot. And uh, it came back down to 11, you know, new people get in, they don't hold it. Once you realize that Bitcoin is the golden goose 
of all the cryptocurrencies because when you own Bitcoin and there's a new fork of a cryptocurrency comes out, then you get free money. So they say it went down, but you didn't add up to that $11,000, the $3,500 that Bitcoin Cash went up to. You didn't add that to the amount that came in. You didn't add the other uh, five, six other forks, which will bring it back to the number that it was at and uh, uh, many more forks to come. So you're only uh, saying, oh, this chicken, this goose is, uh, you know, used to be stronger, now is a weaker goose. But the goose has 30 kids, you know, <laughs> and the kids will come get you. And then, <laughs> and then uh, you know, the goose gets strong again, it has more children and more children. So it's, it goes like this. But it goes up, it goes like this, and yeah, it comes down, but then it goes up, and it comes down, and it goes up. But in your legacy financial system, when something becomes exciting, they just print more shares. We only have 21 million, so as the people, uh, more people learn about it, it goes up, because there's only a fixed amount. In stock, they just print more stock, and it goes, and it goes like this, and it goes down, and it goes a little up, and then it goes down. And in the long, you know, so you, that could be a bubble. So Bitcoin is not a stock. But it does, it clears faster than any stock. You don't have to wait three days for all these things to happen. It clears automatically. It clears within 10 minutes. Uh, Bitcoin is not a currency, but it does currency better than any currency. Bitcoin is the new uh, uh, trust network Is it legal, Nick? Or there are some problems with constitution or legislations or whatever. Can the government stop, let's say, block uh, the currency to be spread? They can try to block it, but uh, Bitcoin is the people's uh, declaration of uh, monetary independence. In the past, you know, monarchs and uh, uh, governments have dictated uh, uh, what you're worth, how much less you're worth as every year goes by. And uh, with Bitcoin, these are peer-to-peer -peer transactions and you can't make any more and it's fixed. So Bitcoin basically challenges the monopoly of the government? Of the government's, uh, well, someday, some, yeah. some smaller governments with bad currency, it challenges it right away. So if you're not uh, a respective of the people and you keep printing more and more and more and more and more and more money out of thin air, like Zimbabwe did in 20, uh, 2004 and five, they had a a hundred trillion dollar note that was worth only 78 cents. Uh, and people got paid three times a day to feed their family. If Bitcoin was around then and uh, worked in their equipment, their phones or something, and in the snap of a finger, the whole country would have been on Bitcoin. So wherever you see hyperinflation, you see people utilizing Bitcoin and other derivatives of, of Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, Florin Coin, whatever, uh, Zap. Uh, this is uh, an inevitability. You cannot outlaw mathematics. You can't outlaw division. So if a government thinks they're gonna, they can outlaw the use or say this and that, but they did it in Russia, I remember, in uh, 2014, and the, and the price doubled over there for the coin right away. Because they know, you know, they, I'm not... <laughs> mm. So... I'm not sure they can try to outlaw it or they can try to embrace it. And I think uh, countries that do not have a big stake in the legacy financial systems are going to be the first ones to embrace it even more because they're not going to have the threat of uh, legal action and stuff from there. Uh, uh, so how, how Armenia, uh, countries like Armenia can benefit from Bitcoin technology? Sure. I mean, even a 13-year-old programmer in Armenia can can write futures contracts in one afternoon and uh, uh, do what banks take years to put together. I mean, if you have, uh, uh, like I said, uh, you know, locked up in the, in the minds of uh, uh, the young Armenians is the future. And uh, we have to unleash their minds and unleash their abilities to, to bring in a brighter future for Armenia and the world. You also, in, in one of, during one of your interviews, say that you are educating young people. How are you educating them? I don't know if I'm and educating, I'm just telling them what I think. I might okay. be wrong. And you also say that Bitcoin technology is a sort of, you compare it uh, to the Industrial Revolution, uh, 
Sure. So you still uh, keep that idea that you yeah, know, yeah, it's yeah. a I sort mean, of revolution? Uh, of course. I mean, there were people, when the train first got developed, you know, they stayed with their donkey. So, you know, some people are going to stay with the donkey. They're going to mm -hmm. be very stubborn, like a donkey, and stay with the donkey. And uh, some people are going to embrace the train. They're going to get on the train. They're going to go to the gold rush. They might build the trains and the railroads become the Vanderbilts and the Rockefellers of the world. And that can happen right here. Uh, the train has been invented. It works. Bitcoin works. Uh, it's bringing in a brighter future for all of humanity. Mm -hmm. A transparent financial future. Where before it was only back smoke-filled rooms. If they didn't like you, they'd steal your money or move it somewhere you can't get it out of all types of rules, specific rules for you. There are no specific rules for Bitcoin. You can get someone from the south of Sudan, trade with someone on Park Avenue, and both have equal rights. Where before, the person in the south of Sudan isn't allowed to have a bank account. There are no banks in the south of Sudan that would even handle a person like that. or They don't even have uh, uh, banks for people. They probably do in uh, some place, but most of uh, the world is unbanked. Uh, we don't need uh, the bank. The internet has come after many, many businesses. Uh, and now the internet's coming after money and banking. And it's uh, the scarcity. We just, you know, we came up with scarcity. It's proven now for nine years that this digital scarcity works. Uh, you should read about it, learn everything about uh, Bitcoin and proof of work. And uh, you know the protocols and stuff, and the consensus algorithms, and uh, you'll fall in love with it just like anyone else does, and you'll understand the value of it. And uh, people are doing it every day. Uh, once they find out what it is, they can't do anything else. And uh, I've seen it before with the internet. I was early in the internet. I was on the internet when it was illegal to be on the internet. I built uh, a modulated demodulator modem. From scratch, I built the computer from scratch. I etched my own board. I, uh, I wrote my own operating system, and I built. I couldn't buy a computer back then. It was, 20, it was 19. Not IBM, not iOS. Not nothing, IBM, nothing. 1970. Well, probably buy a big mainframe, a VAX or something. Uh, 1977, 78. And uh, I loved the computer. Just the idea of a computer. I thought the computer was going to give me the answer, the answers I needed. And I wanted to build a robot. So I, I was three hours by train to the nearest library that had information like that. So I would get on the train and uh, go into New York City, into Manhattan, and go to the science library. And uh, read up about it, and read, 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 and etch boards, and try this, and try that, and put the chip, and trial by error, over, and over, and over, and over again. And uh, I finally got it to do many things. Then I bought a, a Heath kit where I had to uh, solder that too. You couldn't buy a complete computer. And uh, I've had computers ever since. And uh, I also discovered girls and fast cars and Bill Gates didn't. But you know, that's the life. I would never trade that for anyway. the fast cars, of course. Nick, it seems that people also like are uh, a little bit scared of this virtual reality or artificial intelligence or whatever, you know, all these kind of things. And also they think that we are going into this new kind of paradigm, which is digital paradigm. So is there any, any problem there or we have to embrace it with no, no problem? Yeah, you know, there's probably going to be problems. There's problems all the time. Uh, there's a new realm coming. I'm not sure. I believe maybe blockchain is going to help the intermeshing of humans' brains with machinery, uh, augmenting our memories into blockchain. I have a patent on uh, a multi-branch blockchain, and uh, you know it's uh, it's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen, mm -hmm. but it's going to happen. Uh, we have to embrace, of course, anything that's going to happen, good or bad, to be able to deal with it when it does happen. Or we can become blacksmiths, 
we can stay blacksmiths and play with our donkey. And again, my final question, uh, what could be your message to the Armenian government and uh, Armenian young people? Uh, well, the government should exactly, of course, embrace and put a moratorium and not touch uh, cryptocurrency or blockchain at all and, make, and don't make any regulation on it and see how fast we flourish or you guys flourish here in uh, Armenia in the next two years. Uh, it's going to be night and day. I mean, these things are moving so fast. Uh, everyone has a computer in their hand. Their smartphone is a computer. And then the world changes uh, in a snap of a finger. Everyone's using certain software. <clears throat> you know, some Armenian kid can write some uh, Bitcoin blockchain software and change the lives of uh, uh, thousands or all around him right away and uh, maybe even the whole country. So I would uh, put a moratorium on any decision. There's absolutely no way any elected official understands anything about Bitcoin or blockchain. They only hear these uh, stories, cheap stories from uh, uh, reporters and people in the news, unlike you, that want to write a quick story. Oh, someone sold seven stolen goats for Bitcoin. Bitcoin is bad, <laughs> right? Yeah, because that's that was the level of the reporter. What the reporter came up with, uh, I try to explain to everyone uh, years ago that you know it's not a conspiracy against Bitcoin. It's the IQ or the not IQ, but the 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 want or the ability for the reporter to learn or even have the want to learn or even be able to see something. The Bitcoin's so different from anything that existed in the past is not easy to, to understand it. I mean, now the price went up so high, more people are gonna understand it. They, they, they have to, some people have to understand it because of how much the price went up. I, I don't know, I don't know prices. Uh, uh, I just understand the technology. I don't want anyone to buy Bitcoin unless they understand the technology. If that happens, then Bitcoin is only gonna go up and it will never, come down because once you understand the technology you have to buy it and hold it because you understand that maybe one whole country is going to work off one bitcoin in the future mm -hmm. all their data you know maybe uh you're not going to know one person with one bitcoin it's going to be too huge uh, uh an ownership so uh i want people to do their homework if there's a smart country and uh, smart people and i want people to do their homework and understand before they buy anything i don't want them to buy anything i don't get anything if you buy it i don't care it's not uh, you know uh, it's not a uh, for me it's not a financial thing it's uh, it's a freedom thing i've always fought for freedom i uh i had many jobs i did many different types of work uh, while in computers, always in computers, and uh, always building businesses around computers or trying to help businesses uh, or create businesses with computers. I had uh, getaroom.com was like the first Airbnb. I had FYI America was an early uh, type of uh, six degrees of separation. I didn't finish that project because of the, some partners. Like Facebook, it was like 1995. So no one else had a computer, you know, really. And then we built... Um, Livery, uh, livery cab in uh, 2007, but no one had a smartphone. That was uh, like Uber. Uh, and then I got involved with the uh, uh, competing currencies campaign of uh, Dr. Ron Paul. And uh, my fight went to something I believed in, which uh, my work and my fight went to something I believed in. It turned into Bitcoin. And I believe in it, and I find it's not even work anymore. It's uh, enjoyable, and I'm a, I feel like a warrior, and I enjoy it, and I can pay the bills. Nick, thank you very much <laughs> for this exciting conversation, discussion, your thoughtful answers. I hope that uh, people watching us also enjoyed your answers and also got some new information, and they can now be more informed about Bitcoin and what's going on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me.
Thank you very much. Thank you for watching uh, Paradigm TV show. See you next time. Yeah.